Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to this special edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. It is that time of the week again to count down the 10 hottest cards of the week. And did anything happen this week? Let me think. Oh yeah, that's right, Luris of the Dream Den was banned in both Pioneer and Modern. One of the cards in our top 10 today is moving a lot because of that ban. We also see some Kamigawa Neon Dynasty cards heating up. Plus, we even have a few reserve list buyouts, so a little something for everybody. Quickly, before we get started, though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order the 2022 Standard Challenger decks there, plus they have a whole lot of other things on their website. Remember, if your order's over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use that Heroes promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated, so thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. Number 10 is March of Otherworldly Light. This is up 229 this week to 466. That is a 97% increase. And this is a good time to let you know how we compile our top 10 every week. We're looking at two major pieces of criteria. The first is a percentage increase in the value of the cards. And secondly, we're looking for a true increase in sales for these cards. So if you're expecting something to be on the top 10 and it did not make it, well, it fell short in one or both of those categories. With that out of the way, let's talk more about March of Otherworldly Light. So every set feels like they have that card or two that shows up in a ton of different places, at least early on. Sometimes they maintain, sometimes they don't. Well, this time, this is one of those cards. In Standard, it's an Azorius Control, Esper Control, and much more. Pioneer, it's an Azorius Control, Esper, Grease Fang, and more there. Modern, it's in Four Color Omnith, sometimes Orzov Blank, and it's in more decks in that format, too. I did see Aspiring Spike did a video for Channel Fireball this week testing this card in a Bant Control deck. That could have brought some attention to it. In Legacy, sometimes I do see this in 4-Color Zenith, and I have seen players trying it out in various other builds too, in Legacy and actually Vintage as well. Plus, does it see Commander play? Of course it does. It's in decks like Light Paws Emperor's Voice, Ishin 2 Heavens is 1, Hinata Dawn Crowned, and more builds old and new. And on top of all that, it did get a Command Zone mention this week as well, which could have brought further attention to it. Number 9 is Umbra Mystic, up 313 this week to 999. That is a 46% increase, and this is seeing increased commander play in Light Paws, and to a lesser degree, another card from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, Norika Yamazaki the Poet. Number 8 is Drowning Dreams. It's up 315 this week to 749. That is a 72% increase. This is from the Innistrad Midnight Hunt Undead Unleashed Commander deck, and you guessed it, it's seeing more commander play now since Kamigawa came out. You're going to find this in Hinata. And to a lesser degree, Jin Gataxia's Progress Tyrant builds there. Number 7 is Kaikar Wins Fury. This is up 355 this week to 1093. That is a 48% increase. This is a popular commander, but it's also in new builds around a card from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty again. And that card is Hinata. Number 6, Hidetsugu Consumes All. This is up 529 this week to 1362. That is a 64% increase. Last week, MTG Goldfish did feature a standard Mardu deck built around this card. Definitely could have brought some attention to it, but it is seeing play in a lot of other places, too. It's in Rakdos mid-range sideboards, for example, and Pioneer. When it comes to Modern and Legacy, it's good against Urza Saga in general, so I have seen some players trying this out in different builds. For example, in Modern, I saw this in a Domain deck. In Legacy, I've seen it in Control builds. And Aspiring Spike did another video for Channel Fireball this week. This one was for a Legacy Grixis deck that revolved around this card. Aside from all that, does it get commander play? Sure does. It's in Hidetsugu Devouring Chaos, Goshintai of Life's Origin, Ishin, and yes, this got a Command Zone podcast mentioned last week as well. Number 5, The Wandering Emperor. This is up 695 this week to 2194. That is a 46% increase. And here's another card from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty that is seeing a lot of play in a lot of places. This has quickly become a huge standard card. It's in Mono White Aggro, Orzov Midrange, Azorius Orzov, and Esper Control, and much more. Pioneer, it's in Azorius Control. Modern, you'll see this in Azorius Control there too, also Bant Control. And it's getting a good amount of commander play too. It's in Ishin Dex, Ryu Storm's Edge, and more builds old and new. Plus, it did get a Command Zone podcast mentioned last week too. Number 4 is Opal Archangel. It's up 1390 this week to 2199. That is a 172% increase. Now, I have seen this show up in a Goshintai of Life's Origin Commander deck. Not something that a lot of people use, but I did see it in at least one deck list. 
And Streets of New Capenna looks like it may feature some angels, judging by the set symbol in the description, but ultimately this feels like a reserveless buyout. Now maybe the things I mentioned were part of the speculation that encouraged somebody to buy the card out, but clearly all the markers are there for somebody just targeting this card. And number three, similar story, Urborg Justice is up 1522 to 29.81. That is a 104% increase. Sure, this does see a tad bit of commander play, but it looks and feels like another reserveless buyout. Number two is Seasoned Pyromancer, up 1714 this week to 49.97. That is a 52% increase. This is the card that I was alluding to earlier in the video. This is the one that's hot because of the Luris banning in Modern. Luris encouraged players to stay away from permanents that cost more than two, like this one. But now, this card is poised for a big comeback. In Modern, this is in a lot of decks. Gruul and Mardu midrange, sometimes crashing footfalls, and much more. This also gets a little commander play, but obviously Modern is the format moving it this week. And number one is Wandering Mage. Okay, this is up 2547 to 2749. That is a 1,262% increase if you're doing the math at home. Now, when it comes to gameplay, there's not really any to speak of. This looks like another reserve list buyout. This card was obviously targeted. Is there a reason for that? Well, I don't know, maybe. If you watch the MTG Weekly stream on Thursday, they did discuss Streets of New Capenna, and it sounded like wizards could play a role in the Esper crime family called Obscura. Plus, outside the regular set, each crime family is going to get a new commander deck. This is an Esper wizard, and maybe that's the speculation behind this buyout. But yet again, it does have all the markers of a targeted reserveless buyout. As you can see, many of the more recent buyouts are targeting the cheaper cards trying to push them up in value quickly, and most likely they are going to sell them back to the market at a higher price. And that's going to do it for the top 10 hot cards of the week. One thing I want to say before we go, though, thank you to everybody out there, all the subscribers. We did pass 50,000 this week. That is an amazing milestone. I can't believe it myself. I'm humbled. I'm grateful for all the support I've had over the years. Thank you to each and every one of you. Remember to join us this weekend, too, for our regular episode of The Market Watch, where we deep dive into everything that's happening in the secondary market. Until then, though, hey, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.